So I quit smoking yesterday to plan ahead for this. Because I bet if, if I tell you, like, really, yesterday I quit smoking, you're going to clap. And you paid 20 or $25 to clap for me quitting smoking rather than laugh, because I'm in no mood for any of this. I've quit worse before. I, I practiced at New Year's. I gave up string cheese. <laughs> Little White Sticks comes like in a pack of 20. I was on about a pack a day. Yeah, the analogy fits, okay? It's like anyone who says they smoke because they like the flavor, uh, no, because if you're out and I have the wrong kind, you'll still smoke that. And if I ran out of cheese heads and you had the lucerne, uh, I still string that cheese. <laughs> it's a filthy habit. I got to where I was just eating them, not like with the stringing of the cheese. <laughs> just hump. <laughs> just, just right down the stick. Don't. That was a, that was a bad place. <laughs> it's a bad place. So I. Yeah, I made a, a bet with my friend Nick Banish that we could both quit string cheese together. <laughs> they say that you shouldn't make like a quit and smoking pact because you'll just be waiting for one person to mess up so you can mess up too and start again. <laughs> that guy's stronger than I had hoped on the, on the string cheese front. Um, <laughs> it's just where it's at. Lessons for my friend Lucky, young comedian. I love Lucky. Let's hear it for them. <laughs> when someone's losing their shit in the front row at 7.30 p.m., <laughs> you might take that as, a, like, maybe I should be a little less single for tonight, or <laughs> say, where did you make some purchases before you came down here? <laughs> I might be interested to know where you source your fun ingredients. <laughs> I like you, but that lady's my favorite. There was a lady who saw me drop my camera and, and I had sandbags on it. And it got caught, it didn't fall. And I just about shit myself. And she saw it and said nothing. <laughs> I love you for that. You know who you are. There was nothing you could have said. Like, I'm glad we shared that moment, but I didn't break all my things either. All the coolest comedians on this show are autistic. When I found out I, I, I was autistic, I did, I think, what anyone would do. I don't know what anyone would do. That's kind of the point. <laughs> I just, I just sat and I just rocked back and forth in my chair for like a really long time, just deciding where am I gonna post on Reddit about this first. <laughs> Turns out TikTok and Twitter are better. Um, that's what I've learned. That's what I've learned. Oh, the prophet Joseph Smith, um, <laughs> he translated from golden plates that were nearby while well, he looked into a hat and nobody ever seen him. Another testament of Jesus and some of the people in the Jesus fandom <laughs> decided it was canon. So... They were like, we're not going to go to the regular Jesus Con on Sundays no more. We're going to walk to Utah, which was in Mexico at the time. <laughs> an arduous journey where they would cosplay as Little House on the Prairie and a high school debate team. So I never got a taste for coffee. <laughs> Yeah, that was a long story short. I was a fifth-generation Mormon, first-generation with the Internet. 
In my opinion, 15 minutes of research could save you 10% of your lifetime income when you switch to ex-Mormon. I have a lot of cousins, relatively speaking. The Bible's cool, though. In the Mormon church, we, we had the Bible. We just kind of skimmed it. Um, I think it'd be great. You know Kirby in the video games, that little blob guy, and he eats people, and then he, like, takes their powers, and you can tell because he's wearing a hat, and he'll get, like, one of the powers of whoever he just ate. I kind of want him to eat the Pope. Uh, <laughs> just to see what Kirby waddles around with a little Pope hat and papal infallibility. <laughs> Starts reading aloud from the Book of Mormon and you're just like, oh no. <laughs> I'm definitely like, oh no. I just think that'd be interesting. Well, we, we had the Bible. I remember some of it, like I'll tell you some of my favorite stories from the Bible. So if you'll open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 19 for this episode of Family Home Evening, um, we're going to learn about Sodom and or Gomorrah, which were destroyed for being mean to immigrants. Read it again. Except for the person who said true, they know what's up. These angels come to town. This guy was like, let's fuck him up. And then he was misheard, and everyone was like, yeah, let's fuck him. <laughs> there was serious theological debate on whether or not people could have sex with angels. That was the whole side quest. Uh, I just learned about that uh, from learning about this joke. Like, Bible scholars write papers about that, and I read those for your entertainment. <laughs> so there's this guy, Lot, and uh, he was about to have a lot of fun. That was why they called him that, I guess. I, I don't know. Like, in those days, like, women didn't have names. Uh, it was like... They were just treated as, like, vessels for making babies. It was really hard times back then. In the, in the Bible world. And God says to Lot, like, you got to take your wife and daughters and, and run and don't look back. And he's like, well, shit, I, I mean, I guess, I guess. And so he's running. He's running a lot faster than I am right now for a number of reasons. He had never smoked, I think. And all of a sudden he's like, girls, I don't hear Sharon's heavy footfalls anymore. I don't hear her bitching that I unsuccessfully tried to pimp you out last night. Read it again. But he can't look back. He's got to do this, like, Pop Warner football drill. So he's like, oh, what's this? That's salt. By God, girls, your mother's been assaulted. So they went to live in a cave, even though there were other towns. <laughs> Possibly because his daughters were so embarrassed by his puns. I don't know. It just occurred to me. I like, I like the one where Jesus, you know, he's like the main guy. <laughs> yeah, the one in the Bible where Jesus is trying to entertain a baby by pretending to be an airplane. If you don't know that one, it's like the most famous story of him in the Bible. Like every statue is of Jesus doing that. <laughs> Very good story. I'm not I'm not one of those people who's gonna tell you that uh, autism's not a disability and it's just a superpower and blah, blah, blah. No. <laughs> Everybody's different and some of us are awesome and some of us are also odd, odd, awesome. I don't know. 
It's, it's not that I think autistic people should run shit. It's that I think there may have been times in the past where they did. <laughs> I think, cause like, okay, I have special interests, right? There are things I would love to read and talk about. My psychiatrist, when she told me I was autistic, said that's probably why you do stand up. You get to talk about whatever you want and no one else is allowed to talk. <laughs> And that follows the social rules. And I'm like, this is a smart lady. I'm glad I'm paying out a network. <laughs> These insights. <laughs> I mean, like, what? So, so I got special interest. Right? It could be like Batman. Mine's not Batman. I really like traffic signals. <laughs> They're kind of related to trains, but more of the, the traffic signals. Um, calendars. There's a lot of things. It's, it's hard. I like, I like stand-up comedy, obviously. And I can just talk about these things all day. And I can just go read about these things all day. Like, it's all I want to talk about. Because I have social skills. Now, in your vocabulary quiz at the end of the show, you should know that the word allistic means someone who is not autistic. You can be one or the other. It's binary. Um, Allistic is a non-autistic person. Uh, I'll also give you a hint. The second to last word in the vocab quiz will be penultimate. Uh, <laughs> that's coming up. Because like allistic people, I don't know, y you people have this way of like being able to tell if someone's making eyes at you, then you might bang. I don't, I don't do that. I don't, I've never done the hookup culture. I don't know how. It's not for me. What I can do is talk to you for an hour about the traffic lights in Bozeman and which ones I think are the best and which ones are the worst. And an allistic person might incorrectly think that I'm not gonna make friends like that, bullshit. Because you don't have the cool autistic social skills where you just, you meet another autistic person and you talk about what you want to talk about like for a while. <laughs> and then they'll like listen to that and then rather than respond about that thing, they'll just tell you about what they like for a while. <laughs> and so after a minimum of two whiles, you have a new friend. <laughs> if you like the same thing, it takes one while, it's great. Because then, like, I have all these friends where it's like, oh, I saw a cool rock. I'm going to send a picture of it to six geologists that I haven't talked to in two years. <laughs> and they're going to tell me things about the rock. I should say autistic geologists, but that would be redundant. Because um, <laughs> you all, allistic people, are worried. Like, oh, is my friend secretly mad at me? Like, there are people in this room I've known for at least 10 years, and I have I've spent less time worried about all of you being secretly mad at me ever <laughs> than I have today thought about which are the three worst traffic lights in Bozeman. <laughs> Sorry that the allistic people don't get to learn passion like that. That's why you have to have superficial relationships and successfully hook up once in a while. <laughs> Sucks to be you, bud. But once upon a time, the only books were like the Bible. There were no movies. There was no Batman. If you wanted to read about a thing and have it be like the thing you think about and talk about all the time, Religion was it. That was all you had, all of it. Like I would have to still be religious and I would have to get excited about reading the Bible. Just like, like think of medieval times, right? We're getting back to running shit. The Bible's in Latin, do you speak Latin? No, you don't speak Latin. I'm gonna read the Bible and I'm gonna talk for an hour or two on Sunday 
about the Bible that I'm interested in, and you just have to go because we convinced you that you would go to hell if you don't. <laughs> just like maybe do some little magic tricks I learned. Autistic people might enjoy that. <laughs> maybe. Oh my God. Just then go back to the monastery and write letters to other nerds about my special interest. <laughs> Think about it all day and just be like, man, it's so great. I don't have to talk to allistic people. Because you know, those, those peasants, they'll be out there in the field. They'll be in the field during pre-industrial agriculture, like by hand. <laughs> and then a raindrop hits him on the head. He's got to have someone to turn to and be like, a raindrop just hit me on the head. It's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> I'm standing next to you and it starts raining. I don't need to tell you. As an autistic person, I would never say that. And so it's just like, oh yeah, we're gonna send these peasants off to fight in the Crusades uh, while we hang out here and perfect the recipe for chartreuse. <laughs> yup. <laughs> like I, I think, you know, like, oh, just, just like trading card collecting, um, making up patron saints and stuff. St. Lawrence is a patron saint of chefs and comedians. He is, because allegedly uh, they threw him on the grill to kill him, and he said, flip me over, I'm well done on this side. <laughs> and so these nerds were like, he's going to be the patron saint of chefs and comedians. <laughs> but it's not just Western Christianity. I mean, like, I don't know, think about India. Hinduism's crazy, man. <laughs> Just like, again, with all the pre-industrial farming, but then there's the religious elite who are like, hey, how many arms do you think I can draw on this god? <laughs> how cool can I make my crossover god look? You know what book we should be copying down to make sure that our bros have w when they get their arranged marriage? A book of how to be good at sex. <laughs> we'll call it the Kama Sutra. We'll copy it by hand. It will be one of the great things we do in our civilization. It's like now it's oh, it's a disability. This fellow could be nonverbal. He's autistic, right? Back in the day, nonverbal guy. It's just like, oh yeah, Rick took a vow of silence. <laughs> They're all gonna be super impressed because they can't not talk about that fucking raindrop. And he's just over here copying down the most important books in his favorite thing into new copies so that they'll be preserved. Like, that's a good fucking job, man. Because, <laughs> like, now you got to get yourself accommodation to go get your, like, lucky strap and go in the side room and whip it or whatever at your job. <laughs> it used to be, oh, yeah, I got this rosary. <laughs> I'm going to go in this dark, quiet room and I'm going to fidget with the fidget thing, the rosary, and totally do a bunch of Hail Marys. They're going to be really impressed at how long I can sit in this dark room <laughs> and fuck with the rosary. <laughs> hey, did you hear about this new fabric called silk? It's not itchy. Yeah, we're making these fuckers walk to China and get that for us. We'll base our whole economy on this. It might have been autistic people in charge of things from time to time. <laughs> Ancient Egypt, like, oh, cool, falcon head gods. I, my favorite ancient Egyptian god is Nemti. Um, he was never very popular, but he's a god of transportation. <laughs> like a ferryman, like he ferries around the other gods to get where they need to be on time. It's very important that they be able to get the trains have to run on time, so to speak. Um, maybe he's not your favorite, but the Egyptian priest had like a great thing going. It was like, oh, what do you do? Well, it's like, oh, 2,000 years ago, we put some sticks in the Nile and we, we built up this shit and we can measure how high it floods so we predict how much crops are gonna get and set the taxes. 
And you do that with the high water mark uh, one day a year. And then the rest of the year, <laughs> make cool drawings of falcon head gods. It's like, we know so much about their religion because it was the only thing they wrote about. Because the only people who knew how to write were autistic. <laughs> And they fucking love that religion because it had so much nerd shit to get into, you guys. So much. So much. Not just the priests, like the pharaoh, just like, hey, I really like triangles. Like, you got, I don't think you understand how much I like triangles. Oh, wait, no, you've heard of my dad. Okay, his triangle is over there. It is quite large. It is quite large. I will make one. It will be steeper because of the new triangle technology. I'm going to put it up about 10 meters higher on the bedrock there. So it, dad's will still be bigger, but mine will look taller. And then in 5,000 years, Thomas Blake can tell about it on stage. And then you can go there and still get your pocket picked or whatever you do. He's, uh, I think I fucking love triangles. Just like, oh yeah, I have all this cool stuff. I collected it. I'm taking it with me when I die. <laughs> you will bury me with all of my finest things. These are my things. Do not touch my things. I will show you in what order they go and how they must be arranged. It is very important that you handle my things correctly and that I still have them when I die in my big triangle. And then also I will make a lion with my face on it to guard it. <laughs> The, just the cat right there with puzzles. Oh. Yeah, that's exciting. I think, I'm not saying autistic people should run shit more, but I do love rhombuses. A rhombus and a parallelogram don't walk into a bar. They didn't want to be a square going in alone. Uh. <laughs> well, just throw out some math jokes. I have a degree in it, and I get to say what I want to. We've been over this. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a six-pack. That may be apparent. I have division by zero-pack abs. <laughs> they are undefined. <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke for you. Um... <laughs> I'm worried about the pandemic that no one talks about anymore, uh, the cooties pandemic. Because <laughs> when I was a kid, man, I was going to reinvent myself. We moved to Livingston, Montana in 1992. I was seven years old. And uh, I went, I wanted to find out my future from the girl with the folded paper. <laughs> you know, it's just like that little seer, kind of soothsayer, like, oh. Jennifer the Mystic, because that's how old I am. How many rooms will be in my house? Really, how many roommates will I have in my 30s? How many kids will I have? How many abortions will I be sort of responsible for? I didn't do the abortions. I'm not a doctor. She's like... She wouldn't tell me anything. She said, get away, you have cooties. And I was like, fuck! They told me that in my last school. I was hoping it was a misdiagnosis. So I go across the playground and see like Dr. Ashley um, give myself a cootie shot. And she said, no. I was like, come on, we need to circle, circle, don, don. It's a cootie shot. In 20 years, I'm going to find out that's boobs from doing this joke. That's how long it's going to take. She's like, no, you're going to need this information. It's no point in getting a cooties vaccine when you already are infected. <laughs> it's just stuck. It's like, yeah, we don't worry about it, because cooties, I think, is like the Vienna Boys Choir. It's like, the cootie shot cannot be performed after puberty. <laughs> just got to pass the torch on to the younger generation. And it's all just bullshit. And it's, it's coming back around, you know, with the way that legislatures think they know what bills are important to talk about and spend their time on. It's all bullshit about gender roles, right? And it comes from adults. Because if you've got 
you know, I could give you boy cooties, right? <laughs> and then you could give someone girl cooties. Well, oh, it's bad. You don't want that. It's like, you're a boy. You like trucks. You're a girl. You like dolls. You're a boy. You should obey the teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith. <laughs> You're a girl, you should obey a husband who obeys the teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith. Or is that just me? Because really, then it starts bouncing around. Because if I get boy cooties, someone gets girl cooties, boy cooties, girl cooties. Those are trans cooties. They went back and forth. They're gender fluid cooties. You get that shit on you. Just like runs down your arm. You have beautiful nails, but with the dirt under them. Like Mike, Mike Rowe on Dirty Jobs. Gets in your eye, you get perfect smoky eye. <laughs> with the black of like a construction working baseball player. <laughs> I don't know. It's a god for our kids. Be nice to everybody. I'm Thomas Blake. Good night.